This is the chapter 5 lecture where we will be talking about the Renaissance period. Now the Renaissance period comes after the medieval period where uh, Europe started to experience an increase in educational topics as they decided to embrace Greek ideals and Greek cultures. Um, Renaissance is uh, Renaissance does mean rebirth, and uh, that is where that comes from, the rebirth of the ancient Greek ideals. And there were a few major points in European history which affected this increase in education and the arts and things like that, such as the printing press being invented, which helped uh, books to become mass produced and help spread knowledge throughout the area, as well as the Protestant Reformation, which began with uh, Martin Luther and him breaking away from the Catholic Church uh, due to disagreements. So in this period of time, we see an increased interest in secular issues such as science, global exploration, and once again, the arts. We will still be talking about our two different types of music, sacred and secular. And as far as sacred music is concerned, uh, this is a period of time where sacred music becomes more complex and we will see a more intricate texture um, in our listening examples. Secular music, uh, we start to have a few more, uh, uh, more information about secular music, more records of secular music due to the uh, nature of education and the printing press, which allowed music to be written down and uh, copied and more of it made it more available for average people. Now in the Renaissance period, the mass and the motet are still around. They are still very popular genres of music for, uh, for religious purposes. And the characteristics we see of these types of music include uh, four independent parts. Uh, they are still not accompanied uh, with, uh, with instruments. And uh, polyphonic texture is uh, pretty much the main characteristic of music of this time. Now, as opposed to the polyphonic music we heard in the medieval period, we do not have chant melodies only staying in the bass voice. The chant melodies are wherever the composer would like to put it. Sometimes, instead of a chant melody being used with the motet, we would see uh, secular melodies being used or completely new comp composed melodies being used. One of the main composers we will be looking at in this period of time is Josquin de Prez, a French composer who wrote numerous motets, masses, and secular music in this period of time. This is an example of one of his pieces of music, a sacred piece called Ave Maria, which goes back and forth between having a polyphonic texture and a homophonic texture. So first we will listen to an example of a polyphonic section of this piece of music, multiple melodies happening at different times. And here is what a homophonic section of this piece sounds like. Again, 
homophonic because all of the voices are singing at the same time with melody and harmony happening all at once. Another prominent composer was Giovanni Pierluigi da Palestrina, who composed numerous polyphonic settings for the Mass and also composed many motets. Now, what makes Giovanni very important is that at the time of the Renaissance, there was a group called the Council of Trent who was trying very hard to limit the amount of polyphony that was used in music, especially when sacred music was concerned. And we will talk about them in another slide. But it was Giovanni Pierluigi's compositions, especially the Pope Marcellus Mass, that helped warm the Council of Trent up to the idea of polyphony being used in the church. And here's some information about the Council of Trent. Um, once again, they were behind the Counter-Reformation, which you will read more about in your book. But as the church started to, as church music started to expand and started to develop, the Council of Trent was working towards limiting that development and keeping music in the church a bit more classic the way it was done in the medieval period. And some of the tenets that they were going towards include returning to a simpler vocal style, um, avoiding instruments for services, abolishing the use of secular melodies in the mass, and only singing in Latin, as opposed to using the vernacular in church. Moving on to secular music, we will be talking mostly about the madrigal, which was a, a piece of music that, um, that involved many different secular topics, mostly involving love and romance. And uh, we will talk about the char characteristics of this piece of music in another slide. But... As the madrigal developed in Italy, similar pieces of music were developing in other nations and other areas of Europe, and they had uh, different names, even though they were similar genres of music. In France, we had the chanson, and in Germany, the lied. All basically the same type of music, but different languages gave them different names. Uh, characteristics of a madrigal mean that uh, it is a poem set set to music. Um, it began in arist aristocratic courts, and the texts were in the vernacular. Again, we will always see ver the vernacular when secular music is involved. We will not sing about common topics in Latin. And they were usually about sentimental or erotic subjects. Two of our more prominent composers are Claudio Monteverdi, a composer who we will uh, talk about in this chapter as well as the next, and Maddalena Casulana, a female composer who wrote three books of madrigals. This slide discusses how the Italian madrigal developed from the 14th century to the 16th century. At first, it was more of a homophonic genre of music, but it developed into a polyphonic and homophonic genre of music involving four to six voices and using a technique known as word painting, where the music represents the words that are being sung. Another genre of music we have is called the English madrigal. All right, in England, the uh, the madrigal was still called 
a madrigal and it's shared many of the same characteristics as the Italian madrigal. One thing that sets it apart is the use of nonsense syllables like fa la la and if some of you are in choir you may have sung a madrigal that shares this character characteristic. Three of our prominent English madrigal composers are William Byrd, Thomas Morley, and John Farmer. Here's an example of one of John Farmer's madrigals called Fair Phyllis. In this example, there are two two very good examples of word painting once again when the lyrics are used to to um, influence the music somehow the music represents what the lyrics are saying so listen to this example and see if you can hear the examples of word painting So two examples of word painting that exist in that particular example. Hopefully you heard that when the singer sang the first line of text, Fair Phyllis I saw sitting all alone, that was sung by one voice only, one soprano voice. The rest of the choir comes in to sing the rest of the piece. But when they're talking about her sitting all alone, that is sung by a singer all alone. The other example being uh, up and down, being sung in various registers, high and low, and the singers actually characterize the up and down that, uh, that Amentus shows when he is uh, searching for his lover. These are a few characteristics of the French chanson and the German lead. You can read these on your own and find more information about these in your textbook. Moving on to instrumental music. Uh, again, we have a little bit more information about the instrumental music, about secular music in this period of time due to the uh, printing press and just the widespreading of information at at that period of time. Instrumental music began to become more popular in the Renaissance period, and though it, it is not quite standardized, musicians would get together and play music on their instruments without the use of vocalists, and it pretty much started in the Renaissance period. Our most popular instrument was the lute, which is pictured here, a uh, pretty much a, an ancestor of the guitar. Keyboard instruments were very popular, including the clavichord, harpsichord, and the organ. And instrumental groups at this time were called consorts. There were two different kinds of consorts. A whole consort was a group of instruments that all belonged in the same family, where a broken consort was a group of instruments that were from different families. Um, including an example they have at the last bullet here, brass and reeds, popular for outdoor performances. This is where we start to see the formation of 
what would later become the or orchestra or the band as they started to mix different colors of sound together with different instrument families. So first of all, we are going to listen to Flow My Tears by John Dowland, and this is a piece written for voice and for lute. And we'll hear this homophonic texture as the singer sings with a string accompaniment in the lute. Now, the development of Renaissance instrumental music, or honestly, instrumental music in general, was uh, is depicted here in this slide, and where uh, instrumental music started as uh, accompanying for vocal music, as we just heard. And then instruments started to be used for uh, playing dance music um, for, for people to dance to. And eventually it developed into its own genre of music, playing instrumental music just by itself, without the purpose of singing or dancing to be going along with it. Here's an example of some instrumental dance music, Terpsichore, by Michael Pretorius. And that concludes our lecture on Chapter 5. Please make sure you read the additional information on your textbook.